He speaks and talks the truth, walks the walk, and is indeed the real deal. Welcome, brother. Yeah, greetings, greetings, folks. Um, wow, I don't even know where to start, to be quite honest. I'm going to start with my man, Ali. Can I see Ali there? How are you doing, Mr. Desai? Yay! Yeah. Yeah. I some people here supporting you. But remember, Mr. Desai, way back in the day, when we were on a TV program, and I told you, don't join the Metropolitan Police Force. You didn't listen to me. And I've told lots of people lots of things and they've never listened to me. I told people back in the 80s about the murder of Cynthia Jarrett. I told people in the 90s about the murder of Joy Gardner and the murder of Roger Sylvester. Spoke to the PCA, spoke to the IPCC, and even though in some of our cases we've actually had juries, which is what we believe in in Tottenham, juries of our peers actually say that these citizens from our borough of Tottenham, our borough of Hackney, community members from Tottenham, were actually, in one case, unlawfully killed, and in another case, accidental death which clearly means that none of these people would have died, should have died, and would have, would have died unless the Metropolitan Police Force were present. So we've seen this and we know this, and we've yet to see an officer, not just in those three cases, I mean there's four cases from Tottenham, including Mark Dutton, but in all the cases, I think I heard someone say 600 cases, and we're yet to see one officer being prosecuted, being taken to court, for being involved in the unlawful killing of a citizen or subject of this country. 600 people have died and nobody has paid the price. Yet, I've seen two cases where police officers have been charged and taken to court where police dogs have died whilst in police cars and vans. And it kind of says something about the value that they put on life. And it's not just black life. It's the value that they put on life when the Metropolitan Police Force or any police force is actually involved. As we've seen recently the killing of Anthony Granger up in um, Chester by the Greater Manchester Police. It's not just black folk that get killed in custody. It's about when anybody gets killed in custody. And the reality is, I too was involved in complaining against the PCA. We now have the IPCC. But the reality is, it's the framework that these organisations are being required to work in that means we're never ever going to see police officers put properly and fully being held to account for their actions. Let me say this. If it wasn't for the IPCC, there wouldn't have been a riot in Tottenham on the 6th of August 2011. If it hadn't been for the IPCC making up, taking up police suggestion that there had been a shootout, we wouldn't have gone to the police station pissed on August the 6th. And we were pissed because we knew, those of us who know Mark Duggan, we knew and we know that he wasn't bad enough or mad enough to be coming out of a car with a, a reborn gun with one bullet in the chamber to shoot at 31 officers. Nobody would believe that that would be possible. Some people have a difficulty dealing with the issue that he may have or may not have had a gun. But if you saw what went on on BBC News Channel the other day, you'd actually see, you would see officers moving in strange ways, carrying strange articles that may or may not have been a gun, and then planting it some 14 feet from the body of Mark Duggan. Now, when I was on, when I was on the, I was on the IPCC co community reference group. We used to meet with the IPCC commissioner in this building, and I want to say straight up front, I have a good relationship with the IPCC commissioner who is involved with the Mark Duggan case. And what it tells me is that not everybody who necessarily works in this place is a devil or is bad. What it tells me is. You can have decent people doing a shit job if they're required to do it within a shit framework. And really, I think we should be looking at attacking the Association of Chief Police Officers 
because they're the ones who help to claim a framework that ensures that their officers are never truly held to account. I believe we should be taking on, of course, the Metropolitan Police Service, because if they did their job better, we wouldn't need the IPCC in the first place. I was on a radio programme last week with that Deborah Glass appeared on. And Deborah Glass appeared to make a really brilliant call for the strengthening of their powers to compel police officers to give statements. Sounds sensible, doesn't it? The thing is, is if you understand the history, you'll know that they've participated in giving away the powers to ask police officers, to require police officers to give statement under caution in 2008 when they changed their regulatory processes. So they've given away powers where they would ask police officers under caution to give answers. Of course them officers were not an answer, they never did in all the years before. But the fact of the matter is, in not answering, then they become like every other civilian. Then when it gets to the inquest or when it gets to court, we can make an inference from them not answering. The IPCC have now created this process that means that they don't even ask them under caution to explain for their behaviours. The truth of the matter is, the IPCC are not filled with wicked, evil people. The IPCC behaves as though it's a toothless tiger. It doesn't want to put the bite on the police officers. It doesn't want to hold them to account in the way that every normal human being would expect and want them to. And because of that, we have situations like the one we have with the Mark Dunham inquiry, where we're now being told, oops, we might not have an opening inquest because we've come across evidence that we can't put into open court. On the back of the Mark Duggan inquiry, because I think the Mark Duggan inquiry really, if you think about it, is a bit of a land, landmark case. Because everybody wants to know what happens. The right wingers want to be able to say it was a justifiable homicide and everything that went after that was wrong. And the left wingers want to say it was an execution and everything that went after it was righteous. So everybody wants to know. And on the back of that, the IPCC is now making some demands they hasn't previously made. But I agree with the speaker before who said, what's the point in giving power to those who already have power if they don't use the power that they've got? What's the point in telling people that we need the power to hold, to force police to make statements when ultimately they must have the power to make statements? Let's remember what's happening in Tottenham. 31 officers. Those 31 officers have given statements, apparently. I saw the very meager first accounts. They've given their first accounts and then they've indicated to the IBCC that they do not wish to be interviewed. None of us would be able to get away with that. None of us would. But I will say that in fact this thing about the interview may be a red herring. The real issue is the conditions under which the police officers initially give their statements. Because again, if we were witnesses to any tragedy, tragedy or travesty, we would give witness statements whilst being questioned by police officers. Here, they give witness statements that were prepared by, with the, by their colleagues in the police federation. So their witness statements are not open to challenge. And what they really want to ask the IPCC to grant them is the ability to give statements that means that if they say anything within those statements, that it cannot be used against them. In effect, they're asking us in Britain to allow them to claim the Fifth Amendment, a constitutional act that they have in America, and we don't have in England because we don't have a constitution. We also have an uh, issue with the IBCC because of the number of people within that organisation who are ex-police officers. And again, I hear people talking about the number of investigators that are ex-police officers. If it were just investigators, that would be one thing. But it's not. It's their lawyers are ex-police officers. Senior police officers from the Metropolitan Police Force, when they've done their time, they get their retirement money and then they come in and it's a hang-up. 
the press officers are from the Metropolitan Police Force. Remember what happened in Tottenham, some lowly press officer gave some kind of statement to the media that said, marked up and shot at police officers. Clearly untrue. There are too many people in there that are police officers. Now let's be fair. I don't know why we should be fair because people are normally not fair to us, but it's a good idea. Let's be fair. Everybody would want to believe that if you're once a police officer, you're always a police officer. But we're fair people. We have to believe that a leopard truly can change its spots. Now one of the things Mr. Desai will tell you is police officers will always tell you that people like us, we can't change our spots. We have to believe that a leopard can change its spots. But for a leopard to change its spots, it needs to go and hang out with a pride of lions. For a leopard to change its spots, it needs to go and hang out with some, I was going to say cheetahs, but then again they are. They need to go and have some, some leopards. They need to learn some new ways to do things. There's no point taking a leopard in home and then every moment you send it back with the pride or the pack of leopards. And that's what they do here. They take these police detectives and they send them back to them. Last month in Tottenham we had a, a DAC, a deputy assistant, an ex-DAC, deputy a, a, assistant commissioner, talk about policing in the 21st century. And one of the things that he focused on was how within the Met, within the Met, they teach those police officers there's a them and us scenario. They teach them, especially post-riots, there's a them and us scenario. So we cannot expect or we cannot believe that they can take police officers into this building and all of a sudden, all of that learning, all of that teaching, all of that history, all of that culture goes out the window. But I say again, we've got to be fair. So it's not about who carries out the investigations, it's about how the investigations are carried out. And clearly, from what we've seen over the years, and from what we've seen with the case of Smiley Poulter, the, 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 the case of Sean Rigg, the case of Kingsley Burrell, the case of Mark Duggan, what we're clearly seeing is the IPCC have not got the courage and the temerity and the balls to hold the police to account in the way yeah. that we want them. And that's what we're going to be demanding here today. That's what we're going to be demanding here today. The way that we change these institutions is not by leaving institutions to change themselves. The way we have changed these institutions is by engaging and involving the community that those who have suffered and those who know to work with these institutions to help them to change, to develop their, their understanding and to give them the balls that they really need to be successful in what they seek to do. I don't know how to end this to be quite honest because it's not a big enough demo. It's not going to stop the IPCC. It's not going to change the way the business is done. But we need to do that. We need to find more like-minded brothers and sisters to come out on a day of action, a proper day of action, where we stop London, where we stop the traffic, where we stop this crap from going on anymore. But ultimately, most people want to think it doesn't affect them. They go by in all this traffic, they go by in their cars, they look at us and they think that we're nutters. And you know what? Next year when we're here, there'll be one or two more of those people who didn't give a damn then who are going to give a damn now because it's happened to them. Yeah. I think that as a community, as a people, we have to demand that the police are held to the same standard of justice that every citizen in this country is. We need to remind this country that they're there to uphold the law, to maintain the law, not to make the law and to break the law. Solidarity is yours.